Hello, Gemini. Welcome, welcome to your reading. Happy May 2018. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I named your video, They Hurt You Because They Love You. Look, there's a lot that comes out in the comprehensive reading, but I'll touch on it a little bit here. This emperor of yours really, really cares about you, okay? And it's very, very important for you to know that because it's very likely that they're going to cause some hurt or disappointment or even like really frustration. But you guys have to admit that you're going through some pretty deep stuff. And it's stuff that you don't necessarily enjoy going through. It's that very Virgo quality, very hermit-like. And the reason why I say you don't really like going through it is not because you you can't or you're incapable of doing it, but rather because it's just so like unhappy. And I always see Gemini as being a very happy sign, very happy-go-lucky, very passionate about life, and, and there's tons of curiosity, and you know, there there's this buoyancy. And you seem to be anchored down. And it's not just this month, I think it's been kind of a theme for you guys, but I think that what's going on is there's just an extreme level of self-improvement and this emperor of yours is really going to hit home um, a lot of things that maybe you're not really going to like and sometimes it's hard to have the truth be reflected back to us you know um, especially if it's a little bit harsh and there is some harsh energy you know you do seem to be in a little bit of a blinded state right now meaning you just can't quite see where you're going you're doing things robotically out of obligation whatever please know that you're absolutely on the right track so there's no like there's no need to be doubtful um, just keep doing what you're doing, but as these kind of curveballs get thrown towards you, it's going to be important for you to maintain that course because I think there's going to be some unexpected stuff that, that sort of occurs and comes up. Now, thank goodness, September, or September, April 15th, Sunday, April 15th, we've got Mercury finally going back direct in, excuse me, in Aries, which is going to be a great thing for Mercury ruled signs. Going to get back into that left brain kind of modality, out of the right brain, out of that sort of more abstract way of thinking. We're going to have the um, sa the Saturn. We're going to have Saturn and Pluto both heading into retrograde at the end of this month of April. So now a lot of the major planets, the outer planets, are working their way backwards in the sky. Saturn is going to force that very steady, very stern. Um, kind of pace and it's a pace that maybe Gemini doesn't really like so much you know um, Pluto also as well an energy that Gemini doesn't really like so much luckily later on you are going to get Venus April 24th Venus comes into your sign and I think around April 24th you're going to feel that like breath of fresh air and it's like oh, okay I can breathe I have this stability, I have this beauty, I have this new appreciation for life, and, and I think that you are going to be a little bit more um, likely to be more social, to go out, to going and being with your friends. But you have to be careful with your friends because as you'll see in the tarot reading that there is a little bit of trickiness there. Be careful of what you say to these friends, be careful of how much information you give them because they may sway your progress a little bit. So just be a little careful there. Um, but all in all, uh, a good reading for you guys. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks so much, and I'll see you next month. Bye. Hello, Gemini. Welcome to your May reading. I'm so excited to do your reading today because, weirdly, for the first time ever probably in my life, <laughs> I feel very attuned to you guys. And Gemini has always been a sign that I struggle with because I've got my Chiron in there, and... Uh, I just don't feel like I don't really have a lot of Gemini friends and all of that. So I don't know. I was like meditating on you guys and I was like, yeah, let's do this. I am so ready and so excited to be doing this, this reading for you guys. So let's just go ahead and dive in. Enough of that nonsense. Um, two of Swords. Reversed. Okay. What is it that you're not seeing? What is it that you're not hearing? There seems to be some blockage in terms of progress, not being able to see an outcome, or not feeling excited about an outcome. I feel like there's a desire 
for something to work out in a specific way and yet you can't see that actually happening. Now, because you are a mutable sign, um, you're very flexible and very agile and that's okay. But sometimes it can be very disorienting when we don't feel connected with our intuition. It could have something to do with the Mercury retrograde guys, not going to lie. But I also remember in the annual reading that I did in, Jan in uh, December for 2018, which I've since taken down, but I remember, and I've mentioned this before, that Gemini was taking on a very Virgo-esque vibe this year, and I'm not quite sure why, but there was a lot of this earth quality coming out for you. And I'm feeling like you guys may feel a little bit stuck in the mud, you know, like you're just not moving as fast as you normally do. And that can be like oh, super like agitating, you know, especially for an air sign. Let's see what else comes out. Gemini. Okay, here comes this one flying out. Ten of Wands. Are you feeling burdened by something, oppressed by certain circumstances? You know, I just want you to know that whatever it is you're doing is totally worth it. The Ten of Wands is always worth it. Because, you know, you see that little house in the corner there. I feel like he's taking his, his wands or his sticks back to his little castle to help him build his castle, right? Or to make it better. Is I feel is a very, actually a very, it's not a Capricorn card, but I do feel like it is very Capricorn in that it is the burden, it is the restriction, it is the restraint, and yet you do it anyway because you know that there's something in it in the end. And, you know, maybe, you know, his head's down here, not really looking forward. It's kind of like blind faith. You're operating in blind faith. And I'll tell you that the blue sky in these cards, you know, blue is a color of truth. It is the color of the ultimate feminine, um, you know, that very right-brained, which is off opposite of how a mercury world sign's mind actually works which is very left brain very or very uh right well sorry what did i say very left brain right very logical very uh maybe i mix those up but the left brain is very logical very static very strategic and, and you being a sign of information and communication you know that's a very left brain activity and so being kind of in this right brain state of mind, this very blue, subconscious, feminine place can be disorienting, like I said before. And so, and that's what Mercury Retrograde does. It causes us to switch to a more right brain modality. And it can be like, oh, what the heck is going on? But just so you know, you're totally on the right track. If there's any question, you're on the right track 100%. Here's the Virgo card. <laughs> oh, you're going through something. It's not deep. It's not dark and, lumen and looming. It's not this like really bad thing. But when the Hermit comes out reversed, there is this feeling of stagnation. There is this feeling of having difficulty with dissecting and really coming to the root cause of certain things. You know, I'm sensing a little bit of a robot mode going on here where you're just kind of doing what's expected of you without a lot of question, you know, there's not like, well, you know, why am I doing this? And, and why do I feel obligated? Why do I feel motivated to do this? Look, you're doing the right thing, whatever it is. Things are going well for you, hopefully. Um, and it's not without purpose. But there might be a need for you to do a lot more introspection than you've been doing. Um, to be in that very Virgo place, that very Virgo state of mind. Virgo is tough, you know, for a lot of people, that Virgo quality, because it's, it's so, like, self-criticizing. It's very harsh and cold, you know, because you've got this, this winter here. And it's cold in that it brings about brutal honesty. 
Now, brutal honesty can come about in, in many different ways, you know, like, but it can be about your childhood. It can be about bad habits that you've acquired over the years. It could be about um, your health as well and really making changes to those things, if not at least acknowledging that they exist, right? Like I said, what are you not seeing? Choo are you choosing not to see something or are you totally oblivious that there's even something to see? This requires meditation, guys. The hermit on the top of the mountain. Like, can you just think about that idea? The yogi, the wise man. They all go up to the top of the mountains, right? They all need their solitude and their space and they, they rise high, they go higher on earth uh, and they somehow come down off the mountain with a whole bunch of answers. Well, we can get on the metaphorical mountain and, and close our eyes and allow things to come to us. I'm feeling a little bit of a spiritual blockage for some of you, maybe not all of you, but for some of you when that hermit is in the reversal and the emperor. Hmm. I'm gonna have to clarify the, the, um, the hermit and the emperor in the comprehensive for sure. But I feel that this hermit is a very, uh, I don't, did I say the hermit? I meant the emperor. I don't know if this is really you, but rather someone that is actually quite dominant in your life. It could be a significant other or a friend or a coworker or a boss or whatever. But this person is not a bad person at all, right? Um, they have a spirit of generosity about them, but there is also a harshness about them too, uh, because there's there's an agenda here. There's things that need to be done. This person, you know, has certain uh, tasks at hand. They have an idea of where they want to go, where they want to be. Just make sure that you're not being overly sacrificing and you aren't working overtime to appease someone else. You know, it's 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 good for you to be your own emperor. And maybe there's even questions about how do you become your own emperor? How do you become the master of your own life? Your you know, that concept of self-mastery, which really is what the hermit is about. Self-mastery, mastery of mind, spirit, and uh, emotions, you know. And really viewing yourself as a spiritual entity having a physical world experience. Um, and sometimes that spiritual element can just be completely forgotten when we get so caught up in the real world and we get so caught up in relationships and we get so caught up in making money and, and, and surviving essentially in the physical world. Um, but it's important for you not to lose that this month or to find it for the first time maybe for some of you. Ace of Wands, beautiful Gemini. Oh my goodness, you have this opportunity um, to explore some kind of passion, maybe travel. Maybe there's going to be a heightened level of sexuality for you, and then you just say, ah, you know, sex can be a very spiritual experience, you know, if you really open yourself up for that. And uh, it can really take you to new realms and realms of self-discovery. And because we have Mars coming in contact with Pluto, that makes perfect sense. You know, it's like this, this very, and look, this is actually a card of both Aries and Scorpio because it's a Mars ruled card, right? So we've got this um, Aries and Scorpio coming together, both very sexual signs. And, and there may be some need or some desire to explore in that realm. If you're in a, in a relationship, maybe that is your spiritual act, okay? Now, I talk a lot about spiritual acts. For me, like my main one is traveling and, and reading. For others, it's yoga and, you know, being outdoors, going hiking. For others, it's like staying at home and writing in the journal and decorating their home or whatever. So it's about finding that spiritual act. And for you guys, maybe sex is a part of that because in a weird way, it may help you to explore those deeper parts of yourselves. There's nothing wrong with that, okay? Um, so if you are single, it's very possible that you may meet someone. Now, it might not be like the one, you know, if that if you're like waiting for that. It might not be the one, but it is going to be someone with whom you can actually, you know, can I say like use and abuse? Can I say that? 
Um, and here you are here, Gemini, beautiful, Queen of Swords, love it. There's a connection here, and this is a very, very solid. For those of you who are in romantic, committed relationships, this is going to be a very excellent time for you guys to really, really connect. In a weird way, now I'm maybe contradicting myself a little bit, I'm sorry about that, but it's almost as though you may be trying a little too hard with trying to see the outcome. This might be a case of stop trying. Stop trying to kind of live in your body, view yourself as a spiritual entity, having a physical body experience, and to really like intrinsically understand that separation. You know, when you talk about I, right? That is like your spirit, right? And you talk about me, that's your ego. And you have this sense of I am. And here we have the card of Aries, I am. And I don't know how to explain this. I Maybe this is why I feel connected with you guys. Because I recently came in contact with that like very, very clear understanding. I am versus me. And I am is the spirit, me is like the body, right? And I don't know, I don't, probably not explaining it very well. Mercury retrograde, I'm a Virgo, can I blame it on that? <laughs> not very articulate these days. Um, but I feel as though you come into this understanding of utilizing your body to express yourself with the underlying tone that this is still your spirit and your spirit is here for very specific reasons. Please don't put too much pressure on yourself on really seeing the outcome. You're being guided to do exactly what you're meant to do, to do exactly what you need to do here on earth. So in a way, this may be actually a case of just relaxing for a bit and not being so hard on yourself you know, maybe you are being overly critical of yourself at this point in time, as the hermit can be very, very harsh. It's not the warm, friendly, you know, kindest experience. It can very much lend itself to ultimate self-improvement, you know, but you can't become a self-improved version of yourself without kind of the pain that comes in and is associated with that, okay? Um, if you are totally single, there may be someone in your realm that is going to kind of highlight this for you. Um, again, whether it's through sex. I don't know why I'm seeing so much sex happening for you guys. I really, really don't. But, like, that's what's screaming out to me with this Ace of Wands and this um, Emperor here. I don't know why. Um, but... It could also come through just advice. This could be, if it's not sex at all, uh, you know, a father figure or a, a colleague or a mentor of some kind that totally has your back and can kind of look into your life very, very objectively, see what it is you're going through and really help guide you. And see, the thing I love about a Queen of Swords is she has such a sharp mind, as do you, Gemini, and you have this ability to really weigh both sides, right? Card of Libra, you have that weighing of the scales, collecting of evidence, and there's no hard feeling. So if this person is extra critical towards you, you don't get offended by it. You take it back to your arsenal here and you digest it, right? Hermit Virgo digestion. You digest the information and decide what is beneficial for you and what is not. And it is all for the sake of self-improvement, for the sake of self-discovery, for the sake of ultimate change. Now you guys have Uranus coming into your 12th house. So that subconscious of yours is really going to get shaken up, right? You're really going to have a lot of shifts occurring and has a lot to do with who you are. You know, first house Gemini, especially for Gemini ascendants, a lot to do with who you are. And that modus operandi of that subconscious. This is digging deep into the subconscious and really acknowledging things that are driving you that you may have never known were really driving you, that were really motivating you, you know? Well, there you go. How, I mean, it doesn't get any more specific than that. Here we have the tower. 
definitely going to be clarifying these in the comprehensive reading because the tower is like really major sudden change that demands action. This is a card ruled by Mars. Mars ruled, Mars ruled. Okay, Mars is a, a warrior planet. It's a planet of reacting uh, responsibly. I, I wouldn't say it's the most responsive. Like it doesn't necessarily always think things through. Um, and with the Hermit reverse, there could be a tendency to make a knee-jerk reaction to something that kind of comes into your life. It's okay. I think you've kind of uh, uh, earned, let's say earned, I think you've kind of earned that sort of rite of passage for you to really just be a little bit irresponsible. Because I do think you've been a bit hard on yourself lately. Um... Let's see what else comes out. I'm trying to think that Queen of Swords is interesting how she's sort of turning her back on stuff. King of Pentacles, Three of Swords, and then we have the King of Swords. Interesting. A lot of people. This could all be one person for some of you, or there could be multiple players at play. This could even be a connection of, you know, you, yourself. This Three of Swords has been making a little bit of an appearance. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I do feel like it is somewhat of a necessary evil, okay? It is something or some loss or some sadness or whatever that had to happen in order to get you to where you are, in order to get you to be in this path of self-discovery. Look, you guys, it's about perfecting of the self. And... In order to perfect oneself, we all know we can't be perfect, right? There's no such thing. But to becoming a, a better person, to becoming a more productive citizen, to becoming less susceptible to emotional attachments and more attracted to stable environments. And uh, for those Geminis out there who aren't doing this, this Uranus transit in their 12th house is going to be really, really rough. Those of you who are doing it, you will still experience tower moments, tower situations where the things that you thought were um, supposed to happen aren't happening or the things you work so hard for might get affected or change or the direction may, may go in like a complete 180. And that's okay because you have to have faith that you are exactly where you are for a specific reason even if that means that this path needs to be abandoned and you need to go in a different direction, it's okay. Your agility is going to serve you well here. Your mutability will serve you very, very well. Um, the king of coins, see, the more rigid you are or the more rigid someone is in your life, these can be very rigid personalities, all three of them, but the more rigid and more flexible you are, the less likely this is going to be a big deal. Um, this could be a breakup for some of you or a divorce for some of you. It could be a financial loss or even a financial gain as well. Although with the King of Pentacles reversed, I'm sensing that maybe there's something um, in the downward direction for some of you. Um, this could also have to do with just like, I don't know, a mother-in-law coming to live with you or a, you know, a new job situation that fell through or... Gosh, the list goes on and on. And you'll have to adapt. If you are dealing with multiple personalities, more likely more masculine personalities, whether you are male or female is irrelevant. Um, and if they are representing females, okay, we've got the card of Aquarius, Scorpio Aries, and also Taurus happening here. If you are dealing with people with those types of energies, um, they are a little bit more dominant than you this month because they're coming out with the, the king's quality. And it's going to be important for you to really stand firm if there's some kind of a disagreement or there's some kind of... Uh, Like you guys are on different pages. 
you are going to have to make sure that your voice is heard and that you are not overshadowed. See, I feel like you are not feeling so sure of yourself right now, Gemini. And that can be a very dangerous thing when a Gemini is feeling unsure of itself uh, because then they can get kind of washed into other people's things. They can get washed into other people's lives and, and they can get lost very easily. I think a lot of the mutable signs can be like that um, if they don't take that assertive stance. It's important for you to be a little bit um, I'm, using, I'm thinking of the word selfish, but I don't think that's really the best word to use. Three of Cups, three people coming out here. Could be your friends, could be your co-workers. Be very, very careful of gossip. I love to see this card for a Gemini because you can very often be a very social creature if you want to be, if you're not like, because I think Gemini can be both very introspective and extroverted. It's not like a, uh, oh, like I often see a Libra as being very extroverted, a Leo as being very extroverted as well. And that's kind of stereotyping, but you have that, you know, ability to be very introspective. And uh, so for those of you who do choose to be out there, be careful not to, caught up, to get caught up in the drama and to completely abandon the inner work that's going on. You're going to need this inner work for the chapters coming up in 2019 and 2020 as Pluto makes its, you know, kind of way closer to um, Aquarius, all right? And you're going to need that surety of self. So now is really the time to really go through this process, but it can be very tempting to kind of forget about it because this can be hard, you know, and Gemini doesn't like things to be dramatic. It doesn't really like things to be harsh. You know, it, it likes everyone to just get along and life to be more easy. You know, it's not like a Scorpio that's like, oh, I need my life to be oppressive and dark and all and intense, you know, like you're totally not like that. And uh, even the Virgo quality can be tough because it does require a lot of harshness with oneself and a lot of honesty. And so you can very easily get sort of enraptured in this fun, lightness, but also very gossipy and very judgmental environment. And that's really not what you need right now. I'm going to be clarifying these kings here coming out because I'm, I'm not sure what influence they really have on your life. You know, I feel like there's a lot of people that have a lot of opinions about what you should do. And I don't want to see you get influenced by them. You can collect the evidence, like I said. You can think about it. You can consider it. But ultimately, it's really not about them. See, you're, you're definitely at this, like, weird standpoint. Um, you're definitely at this place where it's, like, very unsure and there is a lot of consideration going on. Yes, of course, you're kind of just like I said, the robot mode kind of going through the motions here. I'll clarify this in the comprehensive too. <sighs> Excuse me, my stomach's rumbling because all I've had to eat is coffee and pumpkin seeds this morning. Um, this can also be a super frustrating energy for a, a Gemini because you can be incredibly decisive, right? Let, let's go there. Yep, let's go there. Yep, let's go there. And your mind can just very easily connect with some kind of desire and like, yep, that's what we're doing. It's not going to be like that. <laughs> You're trapped in this Virgo-esque thing, this Virgo aspect of Mercury this whole year for some reason I feel like and it's just ugh, it's a little bit tough um, but it's like I said it's the necessary evil if you are wanting you know here for a relationship I feel like this emperor is probably the one that has your best interest at heart. If you are feeling kind of torn between two people, it's important to go with the one that has your similar ideals, okay? And sometimes the one that has the similar ideals can be the easier relationship, but it's also a little bit more boring 
because you don't necessarily highlight and there's not necessarily tension. Unfortunately, our culture, especially American culture, has sort of glorified the fact that love is hard and that love is something you have to work for. It's not necessarily the case. And in fact, it's better to be like best friends with someone, right? And to develop a relationship with that because it has a more higher potential or a higher rate of success than someone with whom is, you know, a little bit, uh, a little bit too opposite from you. Okay, and it's going to be important for you to really know who you are in order for you to make that dis, dis, uh, that decision. Lots to clarify in your reading, guys. I hope to see you guys at the comprehensives. If not, then I will see you next month. Thank you guys so much. Take care.